Hi, hope you're having a great day. Well, we've spoken a lot on intermittent fasting and dry fasting. And as we have thousands and thousands of testimonials pouring in every single day from around the world with the tremendous, tremendous impact that something as simple as the age old wisdom of using fasting in a supervised and in a responsible manner can impact your health, impact your energy levels and your life. Well, the reason I decided to do another video on this today because there is still confusion about when you should take your thyroid medication, if you're diabetic, can you do it? What if you're very acidic? Should you do intermittent fasting? How many hours should you do? Should you do 12, 14, 16, 18, 21, and all of these things? Well, the first thing is when, we're, when we decide to make a change to our lifestyle, when we're trying to learn something new that can impact our health, the number one thing we need to do is understand the science behind it and understand how it works. For that, it may require a little bit of patience from everyone to understand and watch rather than just hear the things you want and then make your own assumptions. That's what's happening and we notice because there are the same kind of questions that keep coming and this leads to more confusion and forget about the confusion, it actually causes harm to your body and your health if you do it the wrong way. So let's start off with intermittent fasting and dry fasting. We'll talk only about intermittent fasting today. Number one, is it a fad? For the longest time we know that fad diets don't help. Fat diets cause mental problems, psychological problems, and health problems. Yes, you can get some weight loss goals. You can lose two, three, four, five kilos very easily because both, both of these diets are designed to give you what you want, which is quick weight loss, not caring about the consequences and the damage that happens to your health, your skin, your hair, your immunity, and your metabolic rate. Now, why intermittent fasting is not a fad? It's not my idea, it's existed for the longest time. Now, when you go back to evolution, people ate their last meal as the sun set. Most people reduced their water or didn't even drink water post sunset. The, the main reason being there was, there was no light. There was no light post that to cook your meals and do all of the stuff that we can do because today we have something called electricity. So what happened is people finished their meals, they finished their water consumption, and then they spent the next couple of hours socializing amongst their groups. That's why people had communities, people spoke, families interacted with one another, there were dances and rituals and all of those things, or there was prayer time. There was something called prayer time every evening. This, this exists in every religion across the world. And then people slept early because there was nothing like Netflix or television or WhatsApp or Facebook or videos to keep us awake at night. So that's a whole different cycle. We're living in a different world where we have to adapt because things have changed. So people automatically ate less food and they began to fast with sunset. Now when they woke up in the morning, they didn't have fridges, they didn't have processed food with preservatives that you could store. They had to go out and search for food. And that's the whole community of the, hunter, the hunters and the gatherers where they woke up and they went searching for food roots, tubers, berries, fruits, vegetables, killing fish, animals, milking the animals and all of that stuff. And so by the time they ate their first meal, it wasn't like the way we do it where we wake up, have a rushed breakfast or we eat our breakfast in the cars on the way to work and stuff like that. It was probably midday or noon by the time they fed themselves next. So the human body already has the ability to go through famine and feasting. You see, food was never available the way it is today at the click of a button. We can order food on Amazon, on, we can order food on you know, Swiggies and restaurants and home deliveries. We can get food in half an hour to one hour when, with just a click of a button. This didn't exist then and the human body learned to adapt with fasting periods and building periods, which we like to call the elimination period of the human body where there was no food that entered the body and then the building phase, which was also called the feasting phase where there was availability of food and human beings ate food to repair the body, give it energy and all of the, the other functions that the human body requires energy and fuel for. So you see it is inbuilt in us, which is why when we always look at children, most children who wake up are never hungry. Very few children are hungry in the morning. And yet we force them to eat a breakfast and all of that stuff. It's not our fault because we're responsible for teaching the world that breakfast is the most important meal of today because that's what our nutritional curriculum tells us. But when we find out that our nutritional curriculum 
the medical curri curriculums are all funded by the food lobbies, by breakfast cereal companies and all of that stuff, we begin to question ourselves that if someone's not hungry in the morning, why should we force feed them? And that's because we're breaking a natural cycle which has already existed in us, a fasting phase and a building phase. So intermittent fasting is not a fad, but yes, there are a lot of us out there who make it fads. We decide to add 14 hours, 18 hours, 22 hours, like the hour makes a difference, or we try to fast even in the building phase. You know, we try to cut down on food and cut down on calories and macronutrients even in the building phase. So now when you're doing intermittent fasting, there is one simple way of understanding how to do it. If you finish your dinner, for example, at seven o'clock or eight o'clock or nine o'clock in the night, your fast starts then. You don't have any more food. You can sip on water. Now, I spoke about another reason of lowering your water intake post sunset because so many people wake up to urinate every night because they're drinking so much of water post sunset. You're disturbing your sleep, your sleep cycle by doing this. Now, very few people will require to take medications and drink water and have their you know, uh, uh, frequency of sleep broken because they need to urinate. But if we're good with our water intake throughout the day, by the time the sun sets, we're home, we're not doing anything too strenuous, we should lower our water intake as well so that we keep our sleep, our sleep cycle intact. Coming back to intermittent fasting, it doesn't matter whether you do it for 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours, 18 hours, or 24 hours. Everyone's body is different. We need to understand that. All, a lot of us have this common question that, oh, my friend smokes and drinks and he has zero health problems. I smoke and I drink and I have mucus in my chest. I have lung cancer. I have all of these problems. Or you have so many people say, oh, our ancestors smoked for the longest time and they lived till 92 and 93. And why are you telling us that smoking is bad for us? Well. What we need to understand that every human being is different. Some people are weaker, some people are stronger. Some people have stronger immune systems. Some people have weaker immune systems. Some people have created an environment of stress in their life, which we can't see on the outside, but that further lowers their immunity. Some people choose to have a bad lifestyle, which is also sedentary, which has a lot of stress and everything else. So we can never compare ourselves to one another. For some people who are cleaner, they will finish their fasting phase faster. For some people who, are more, uh, who have more toxins in them or they have more weight, the fasting period may have to be longer. There is no one in the world who can decide how many hours is right for you. We understand that the minimum we want to try to achieve is at least 12 hours. The maximum can be up to you, what your body is telling you. You will know when to break your fast because your body will give you this insane hunger pang. And then you know the elimination process is done and it is now time to move into the building phase where your body and cells are screaming for nutrition to start the building phase. So the elimination phase on the intermittent fast, the magic that's happening is the cleaning, the detoxification, the repair, your boosting of your immunity. All of this magic happens in the elimination phase. So a simple example, you have a late night, you drink a lot, you eat a lot, you wake up in the morning, you're not hungry. Why? Because your body is still eliminating, detoxifying and doing all the cleanup process because of the late night and the food and alcohol that you had. It's as simple as that. Your body needs time to eliminate. Now, if we cut the elimination phase, we're left with more toxins and more acids in the human body. So you need to listen to your body instead of finding out who's doing 16 hours and who's doing 18 hours and feeling bad because we can't match up to that. The idea is to listen to your body. So if you start off with 12 hours, that's great. The next day you can do 13 hours. The first day you may just do 10 hours, then move to 11 and 12 and 13. This is not a competition. This is about finding out what is right for your body. And every day will be different. You'll know that the days that you do intermittent fasting more and more, you'll find that your fasting period lasts lesser and lesser because your body's cleaner and cleaner. So there's a lot of magic that happens in this fast and we shouldn't make it into a fad. Now the don'ts are, once the building phase starts, which, is mean, which means you've broken your fast with, with either fruits and dates and you have your water and then half an hour later you start eating all of your foods. In the building phase, you do not want to fast and you do not want to diet. Because if you do this, you will cripple your metabolic activity. You will put your body to more stress because it's asking you for food and you're depriving your body of food. So it immediately moves into famine mode, which is stress mode because it's not getting the food it needs, especially after you fasted for that long. So the whole idea is respect the building phase. Do not try to fast in the building phase. Do not try to go calorie deficient in the building phase. Listen to your body and eat. Don't overeat, but eat. 
Yes, doing intermittent fasting gives you a lot more liberty with the foods that you like. You know, you can have a, your, your chai with sugar, you can have your fruits, you can do all of this depending on your health goal. Because in the building phase, your cells are like sponge. They are going to absorb everything that you eat. Of course, we got to do it with, you know, uh, with a sensible perspective towards it. The next thing, exercising during intermittent fasting. Now, the people who have done it for a long time have also figured that they can exercise during intermittent fasting because you build considerable amounts of energy. Now, going back to logic, I would prefer if people actually did their exercise during the building phase. But of course, most people have their trainers planned and their gym timings planned according to that. So you need to make that decision. If you are intermittent fasting and working out and you find that you're low on energy, your sugar levels start cra crashing, that's not meant for you. You can easily do yoga, you can easily do a one hour walk or maybe light functional movement. But if you're gonna lift heavy weights and do CrossFit and run marathons and stuff like that, it is not suggested that you do this unless you understand your own body. There are people who can do a one hour intensive workout without food in their system. But these are people who have been doing it for a while. They've understood when to feed their body and when to rest their body. So yes, you can do light activity while you're intermittent fasting. Or what you can do is you do your workout and plan to break your fast within an hour post finishing your workout so that you're able to give your body a post workout meal, which is extremely important for your body's recovery. We spoke about 14, 16, 18, 21 hours. It doesn't matter. What matters is what suits your body. So stop trying to compete. Stop trying to do 24 hours because your friend did 24 hours. You do what suits your body type and your life. Now, when it comes to your thyroid medication, thyroid medication is best taken on an empty stomach with water because it's best assimilated in an acidic environment, which is when your stomach is empty. So you can take your thyroid medication in the morning during your intermittent fast. You can also take it an hour before you decide to break your fast. So if you take it at seven in the morning and you're breaking your fast at 11 or 12, that is absolutely fine. So there is no issues with your thyroid medication. For people with diabetes, because we've got thousands of people who are no longer on their type two diabetic medication, their doctors have pulled them off it because they've intermittent fasted and corrected their levels of sugar. But now when you're doing it, you need to do it under supervision. You can do it yourself, but you gotta be responsible and understand that you gotta monitor your sugar levels. And if your fast is gonna drop your sugar levels, you need to take that action accordingly. So this is something where you need to do it with commitment, dedication, and discipline. Monitor your sugar levels, understand how long you can go for fast, how long your fasting period can go without major fluctuation. So this is your responsibility. If you are diabetic and you wanna do it, you wanna take professional help, you can do that as well. For people who are on heavy medication, <clears throat> you may not be able to intermittent fast depending on the kind of medication that you take. Because medication, some of the medication requires food to be in the system. Some of them are fat soluble, which means you need food for your medication to work better and to be assimilated and digested and absorbed better. So that's something that you need to look at your medicine chart and you need to figure out whether you can have those medicines on an empty stomach or whether you need food. If you're going through any serious medical condition, always do this with supervision. But I can't tell you the amount of people who are going through chemotherapy right now and they are intermittent fasting to their comfort level while they are going through chemo and radiation and the effects are fabulous. Now this doesn't have to, this doesn't mean it has to work for everyone. You need to judge yourself. You need to have a strong mind and you need to make sure that you're responsible for your fasting phase while you're going through chemo and radiation and do it with supervision of your doctor. Because if you're low, you're weak on energy, your weight is falling, it's probably not, it's not the best thing for you to do that. But if you're healthy and unfortunately you've got cancer, and your weight is good and all of that stuff, you can definitely look at intermittent fasting for that as well. Uh, let's talk about uh, how often you can do intermittent fasting. I know people who have done it now for a year without missing a single day because it suits them and it suits their lifestyle. So you may wanna do it once a week or twice a week. You may wanna do it once a month, whatever suits you. The whole idea is if you're doing intermittent fasting for the first time, do it for three days. So fast for three days, have your building phase, your elimination phase, why I say three days is because the first day when you do it, you go through hunger pangs, you go through all of these you know, uh, feelings of not eating. The second day gets better, the third day is a breeze, you don't wanna break your fast. So I say do it for three days so you get that self-realization that hey, I can do it. Most people are scared. 
Most people have fear and insecurity about fasting because they don't want to face the discomfort of hunger. They don't want to face the discomfort of not eating their meals on time. So do it for three days. You understand how easy it is for you and then it becomes a lifestyle. It is up to you how often you want to do it and how long you want to do it. So if you think three days makes an immense change to your health and has a positive impact on your health and weight, do it for three days. If you think one day is enough for you, do it for one day. The thing is introspect, use common sense and see what suits your life because no one can ever tell you how many hours you should do and how often you should do it. That is for you to listen to your body and decide how you need to do that. Now, what we've realized through the amount of feedback coming in from all over the world, people who are sleeping longer and deeper, which means they're getting their entire amount of sleep that their bodies require, they find that their fasting is much easier and they find that they can break their fast much sooner. And it's beautiful because it just connects with the philosophy of the longer you sleep, I mean, getting your full quarter of sleep, you're anyway detoxifying while you sleep. So not only is your fast helping you to detoxify, but your seven to eight hours as well, which means that when you wake up, there's a chance that you can break your fast way sooner than other people who are not getting sufficient amount of sleep. So what you're doing is you're actually helping your body to heal faster, detoxify faster, repair faster, which is why you don't have to look at long hours of fasting to get the same results. You can probably get it in 12 or 13 or 14 hours as well. So you want to look at your sleep as well. Now, uh, what you may realize is your appetite will fall. When you constantly intermittent fast, your appetite will fall to what your body really needs. Till date, we're all eating according to what we think is right for us. Most of us are overeating or undereating. But intermittent fasting has this ability to reset your body and your appetite. So you find people who are coffee addicts who no longer crave coffee at all. You find people who got off their tea completely without forcing themselves. You find people whose appetites have completely fallen and their portion sizes are smaller and smaller. Because we need to understand one thing, to maintain a healthy body and a, la and a healthy mind and to live longer with good health. It is all about how many calories we put into our body. Fewer calories means better health, but not depriving yourself or starving yourself. Because most humans today are overeating and eating too much. So when we cut down our calories without starving ourselves, everything gets better. Your skin, your hair, your immunity, your weight, your metabolic activity, everything changes in the body. So you can think of an intermittent fast or a dry fast as a natural reset for your body. Now an intermittent fast doesn't have to suit everyone. Some of us are psychologically weaker, so don't do it. You don't have to force yourself to do it. Anything that you force the human body to do will not work for you, whether it's exercise, diet or anything. If it suits you, do it. Give it a fair trial. Give it, give it two to three days before you decide whether it suits you or not. Some people who have a lot of physical labor in the morning or who use a lot of brain power meeting after meeting, may, it may not work for them. But at the same time, we know CEOs who are on this intermittent fasting right now and they say they don't eat till two o'clock and they have their most productive and energetic meetings in the first part of the day when there is no food in their stomach and for some of them, no water in their stomach. So like I said, it's different. You will only know what suits you when you try it. So instead of looking and having this herd mentality and trying to copy what everyone's doing, do it and really introspect, live mindfully, see how it works for you. After a while, you'll wake up with more energy levels. And the one thing that intermittent fasting does, it spikes your body cellular energy to a level where you have no more dependency on things like alcohol, caffeine, sugar, processed food. It literally resets you. It's one of the best ways to cut down cravings of sugar and caffeine. All of us crave this because our unhealthy body craves all of this. A healthy body doesn't crave all of this. So it's a natural reset without you having to use too much of your willpower. And that's, that's all when it comes to intermittent fasting. These are the do's and the don'ts. And if you have questions, keep posting them or keep trying to do it and understand. Don't force yourself into this. If you're recovering from a disease and stuff, you want to ease into it. You don't want to shock your body with all of this right now. And the older you are, especially for the elderly and the senior citizens, if you want to live longer without suffering, even if you have conditions right now, you must with faith and belief, explore how fasting will change your health and your life. The next question is, will this ever be studied? And unfortunately, no, although it exists in every religion on this planet. Every religion talks about the health benefits of fasting, not only for the physical body, but for the mind and for the spiritual self as well. Because we have to understand one thing, you cannot make money out of telling people to intermittent fast. You can't sell this. 
You cannot do this, although I'm sad to say a lot of people are taking intermittent fasting and trying to model it into a diet program and charge people for it. This is something which is inexpensive and free. It's part of our DNA. It's part of our evolution. It's ex it exists free of cost for all of us to do it. So don't be confused. Don't let people make this into a fat diet and sell it to you. You can do it. It's inexpensive and free and things like we have to use common sense. How come no one's researching yoga and the immense medical benefits and immense healing it has to almost every disease because people know the truth of yoga that it is healing people know the truth of pranayama and breath that it can heal diseases along with everything else but these things will never be studied because there's no money to be made the only things that research looks at is where there can be profit or where you can make a lot of money out of developing a product or developing a technique so as human beings we need to start getting smarter and using common sense and looking at simple things which are inbuilt into the intelligence of the human body things like nature things like whatever we have okay which is inexpensive and free it has so much of intelligence and brilliance and wisdom to help us live happier and healthier lives but yet we constantly chase quick fixes and chemicals and all of these things and we later five years down the line realize it comes with consequences and side effects so this is never going to be studied and we don't want to waste a lifetime our one time our one lifetime waiting for science to prove this or come up with this because this is going to threaten every possible business to do with food snacks health medicine nutrition you name it so simple common sense is do it self-realization do it it suits you i can't think of a person who has not got health benefits yet and when i'm talking about the kind of testimonials pouring in we've lost count there are hundreds and thousands of people from different cultures, different nationalities, different countries who are just pouring in positive testimonials from diabetes to arthritis to cancer. Are we saying alone this is taking care of it? No, but it's playing a major role in their healing from weight loss to autism to epilepsy. We just keep posting as many as we can because we want the world to see what people are doing out of the comfort of their own homes, going back to their roots, going back to nature, and they are able to heal. And that's the kind of faith and belief we need to have. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. Oh yeah, we have one more great benefit. People who were unable to sleep have reported that their sleep cycles are getting more and more better with the amount of fasting that they do because it resets every function in the human body. Have a great day, everyone.